The eerie droning echoed through the catacombs. It was impossible to tell what it was, or why it was there. That is, until it stopped. Welcome to Monster of the Week! Today we are checking out the Keepers of the Dead, the Susurus. Try saying that five times fast. We are going to talk about what they are, their unique abilities, how they behave, and some ways you can use them in your game. So, what is a Susurus? A Susurus is a seven foot tall humanoid creature, which at first glance appear to be made up of many glass plates covering its hollow body. The Susurus is originally printed for AD&D, but can be found as recently as 3rd edition. If you're looking for the 3rd edition version, you'll want to look in the Monster Manual 3. And despite its synthetic appearance, the Susurus is actually not a construct, it is a living creature, classified under aberration. Little is known about their origin, but they are believed to come from the material plane. So as weird as they are, they're from here. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's take a second and talk about their name. Susurus is a real word, it means a soft rustling or murmur. A whisper. The Susurus in D&D gets its name on account of all the holes that cover its body. These holes pull in the air around them and this causes a soft droning sound. This essentially is how the Susurus breathes. And that droning sound they make can be heard as far as half a mile away. It also has a very peculiar effect on undead creatures. The drone song of the Susurus soothes all undead creatures that hear it into a state of inaction and rest. This strange effect is referred to by many as the sleep of the dead. The affected undead cannot move, nor do they want to. In many ways, this effect is the closest an undead creature can come to being at peace. The Susurus also possesses an uncanny ability to sense the presence of undead. They behave as if constantly under the effect of a detect undead spell. Due to this supernatural ability, it can also strike at incorporeal foes such as ghosts without any negatives. It also has a few other tricks up its sleeve in a fight. On account of its rigid body, the Susurus is treated as having barbs. So this means that any creature that makes a male melee or unarmed attack, even if it's with a natural weapon, is subject to damage from the barbs. Same thing goes for creatures that are grappling or being grappled by the Susurus. And speaking of grappling, this creature is excellent at it. Whenever it makes a successful claw attack, it can attempt to initiate a grapple as a free action, thus taking advantage of its sharp body. Although Susuri are humanoid in shape, discounting the lack of a head of course, when in combat they will often drop to all fours and use their incredible climbing speed to close the gap between them and their opponent as soon as possible. This this can be a strange thing for your players to witness for the first time, because outside of combat, they are very slow moving and are happy to just peacefully lumber through the halls of their environment. However, once aggravated, they will spring into action extremely quickly. One last feature worth mentioning is their method of sight. Unlike many other creatures who don't have eyes, Susurai do not use echolocation or sound to see their surroundings. They interpret the world around them based on the movement of air. Any dead zones mean a physical object, and a moving dead zone usually means a creature. This trait, like most traits, can be either Either an advantage or a disadvantage depending on the situation. In total darkness, the Susurus is completely unaffected and can fight and function as it normally would. However, if one of the players casts a spell such as Fog that obscures the air around the creature, it is effectively blinded. Many players seeing that this creature doesn't have eyes may jump to the conclusion that it has an echolocation-like ability and sees with sound, but no matter how quiet they're being, if they're moving, the Susurus can see them. So that should give you a picture of how the Susurus fights and perceives the world, but let's talk a little bit about their personality. Like most living creatures, every Susurus is going to be a little bit different. That said though, they are generally very peaceful and won't initiate the attack unless provoked. The exception being, of course, an undead creature. They will destroy any undead creature on sight. They communicate via their own language, which consists mostly of hollow sounding gusts of air and vibrations of their peculiar bodies. Very few of the creatures possess even the capacity to emulate this, let alone the means. Susurai so have an exceptionally long lifespan, some of them living upwards of a thousand years. This long lifespan could be part of the reason why outside of combat they can almost seem lethargic. They are happy just to take things slow and wander through the halls of their underground homes. Overall, a Susurus lives a relatively peaceful life. So I'm sure just based off of what we've talked about already, you've got some ideas brewing about how to use them in your game. Given their extraordinarily long lifespan and their ability to soothe the undead, they could make excellent guardians for an ancient tomb or crypt. A kingdom could easily have a Susurus watching over a crypt of kings, or a catacomb where noble families of the realm bury their dead. That way, if anyone ever tried to defile the dead and raise them as zombies, the Susurus would keep them at bay and at peace. If you cast a Susurus in this role, an interesting plot hook could be that maybe the Susurus is nearing the end of its incredibly long lifespan, and the local ruler sends the party out into the world to find a replacement before it's too late. This could result in some very interesting interactions with a friendly but extremely alien being. Not 
Not to mention the trip to the actual home environment of the Sasuris, presumably where they would have to recruit one into the king's service. The monster manual doesn't give a whole lot of detail on where the Sasuris live, so it could easily just be an underground labyrinth somewhere. However, if you wanted to make it more memorable, you could put the home of the Sasurai in a very alien and strange distant environment. Perhaps the underground passage to the realm is actually a gateway between the Shadowfell and the Material Plane, or maybe even the Feywild. You could even have them exist on some kind of strange demiplane that is somehow connected to your world. And ultimately, if the players don't succeed on the quest, or if they take too long, they might return to a kingdom under siege by the undead. Perhaps a necromancer saw this small window of opportunity as a chance to resurrect the sleeping hordes beneath the city. You could even have an adventure begin this way, with an assault from the undead. And then the local ruler tasks the players with finding a Sisurus to help lull the risen dead back to their tombs. Or, if you want to use them as an encounter where the Sisurus fights the players, like I said, they make excellent tomb guardians. So perhaps one of the tombs that the Sisurus occupies is actually a dungeon your players are exploring in search of treasures. The players will immediately feel uneasy when you describe the constant hollow droning that fills the halls of the dungeon. As they get closer to the main chamber where most of the treasure is hidden, the droning gets louder and louder. Until finally they open the door to this massive hall, only to see this incredibly strange and alien being in front of them. While the players are happily looting and digging up as much gold as they can, the risen dead, now without the droning to keep them at bay, are starting to rise from their crypts and fill the halls of the dungeon. To the surprise of your players, the challenge was not getting in and finding the treasure, the challenge was getting out. If you set this upright, you can create a very memorable moment for your players when they finally realize what's going on. Make sure from your description of the dungeon it's obvious that it's a tomb. The players will most likely expect to be fighting undead, but when no undead are found, then they might start asking a few questions. The other key to this is to make sure that they're constantly aware of this droning sound. Just make a point of mentioning it with each room that they go into. When they figure out what's going on and that the reason the undead are rising is because they killed the Tomb Guardian, the payoff is excellent. One last quirk that the monster manual mentions is that a Sisurus will actively attack any creature holding a source of flame, such as a torch, a lantern, or even a sorcerer's produced flame spell. From the creature's perspective, the fire is polluting their precious air, and they will not stand for it. If you're going for an adventure where the Sisurus is more of an ally than an enemy, I would almost ignore this quirk completely. It could make for an interesting encounter and kind of add to the mystique of the Sisurus. If, say, while being led into a crypt to meet the current Sisurus, the NPC leading them there explains beforehand when they get to the door that they have to put out all sources of flame before they enter. This will build upon the sense of wonder the players are sure to have leading up to them meeting this very weird creature. But if you can't find a good way to make sure your players understand this in-game, it might be better just to ignore it altogether, because it would be very confusing for a creature that the players are supposed to be helping to suddenly turn on them and attack them with no warning. On the flip side though, if you're using a Sisurus as a tomb guardian or just an encounter, the lighting of a torch can be an excellent trigger for this otherwise docile creature to suddenly turn on the party. Well, that's all for this week. I think the Sisurus is a very unique and interesting creature, so hopefully you can find a way to use them throughout your DMing career. I'd love to hear about your experiences with these creatures or any plans that you have to use them, so please leave a comment below so we can talk about that. And if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please be sure to subscribe. I talk about monsters every week, and sometimes I talk about other things too. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.